there everyone, this is Mom Rachel Ann and you are watching Media and Information Literacy Lesson 2. Here are our objectives. First is to identify the devices used by people to communicate with each other, store information, and broadcast information across different ages. And then, to create a timeline on how media and information have evolved throughout history. But first, let me ask you a question. Familiar ba kayo sa tinatawag nating Royal Mail Ship? How about Kina Jack and Rose? Ano kaya ang similar sa kanila? And if you guess the Titanic, then you are right! Not many people know that the RMS in RMS Titanic stands for Royal Mail Ship. At the same time, it stood for Royal Mail Steamer. Ibig sabihin, the Titanic was contracted to carry mail. Now, if the Titanic sank somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, how do you think the news reached people in England and New York at that time? How about if the Titanic sank today? In what format would people receive or read the news? And that's what we're going to find out as we talk about our lesson for today entitled The Evolution of Traditional Media to New Media. First, we have the prehistoric or pre-industrial age which has occurred before the 1700s. If we were to describe the developments in society in this particular age, this is where people first discovered fire, developed paper from plants, and forged weapons and tools with stone, bronze, copper, and iron. While it is very ancient and the people have very limited resources to work with, there are still different forms of media that have emerged back then. So again, ito yung mga panahon na hindi pa marunong magsulat ang mga tao. Included din dito yung Stone Age and Metal Age kung saan based ito sa available na resources na meron ang tao noon sa bahay, sa paghuli ng mga hayop na kakainin nila at susuotin. Pinapatalim nila yung stone and metal para umukit sa mga bato or kweba. Yung mga sharp stone and metal ang mga nag act as their pen while yung mga caves naman yung nagsaserve as the canvas or the paper. Now, you might be wondering, saan po nila ginagamit yung mga matutulis nilang bato or metal kung hindi pa sila marunong magsulat? Hindi pa man marunong magsulat yung mga tao sa prehistoric age, marunong na sila magdrawing, paint, at even yung paggawa ng engravings or yung mga ukit ng kung ano yung mga nakikita nila sa environment nila. Usually, mga animals and symbols yung mga naguguhit nila, katulad na lang ng mga examples na ito. So, this is what we call the rock art from the pre-industrial age. Merong two types nito. Una ay yung pictographs which are the paintings na nasa mga kweba or bato na usually mga dahon or dugo ng hayop ang ginagamit bilang pangkulay. For the second one, ito naman ang petroglyphs. So, ito yung mga inukit or mga carvings sa bato or kweba. Basically, yung pictographs ay ang pagpipinta and petroglyphs naman ay ang pag-uukit. Through these cave paintings or rock art dating back to as far as 35,000 BC, we get to have a glimpse of what it was like to live during prehistoric times. Moving forward, as time passed by around 2500 BC, habang mas nagde-develop pa ang civilization particularly in the country of Egypt, People started to draw and write through the papyrus. This became their medium of communication. And sa ibang region naman, pagdating sa Mesopotamia around the Western Asia, these clay tablets were used. While sa Rome naman, meron silang Acta Diurna, which became their first newspaper and served as a mode of communication between the government of the Roman Empire and its people. Sa so 2nd century in China, they have the Bibao na nag-serve rin as the official newspaper during its time. In the Mayan region during the 5th century, they have the Codex na kung saan nakadocument pala rito yung buhay ng mga tao noon sa may region ng Central America or the Mayan region. That's why nung na-discover ito, naging malaking tulong siya to discover more about this region and their culture. 
Lastly, in the East Asian region, lalo na sa China, Japan, and Korea, we have the printing press using wood blocks, which is an advancement in comparison to the act of writing text over and over again. After some time, we transitioned into the industrial age during the 1700s until the 1930s. Nung panahong ito, people used the power of steam and fuel to develop machinery and tools. Dito na umusbong yung mga factory or yung mga pagawaan. And yung mga pinoproduce nito ay merong important role or contribution sa industrial age. So ano-ano ba yung mga ginagamit noon? We have paper, textiles, chemical products, and electronic parts. Take for example, yung mass printing gamit ang movable printer or yung printing press kagaya ng Gutenberg ay nag-emerge noong 19th century. Kailan ba nagsimula ang newspaper production? Nag-start ito noong 1600s. For example, we have the London Gazette which was the first modern newspaper produced in 1665. Then, the typewriter was invented. So, baka yung iba sa inyo ay nakakita pa nito. Maybe sa mga parents or grandparents nyo. This was produced to the public way back 1800s. Around the 1840s, the telegraph was invented and used. So, kung familiar kayo sa Morse code and if you're wondering saan ba ito nagamit dati, then dito siya pinaka na-utilize. May katagalan pa ang flow of communication since each code needs to be encoded and decoded. And soon, nag-emerge na ang telephones in the year 1876, which was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. During this period, na-invent na rin ang motion pictures, sound films, and punch cards na ginamit naman for computing. As we have seen, may mga pagbabago talaga nangyayari kada panahon, kagaya rito sa industrial age, na apektohan ang ekonomiya dahil noong una, mga workers or manggagawa ang kailangan sa mga factory para makagawa ng mga materials na kailangan. Pero rito, makikita natin na unti-unting pagkakadevelop ng mga machines na siyang pumalit sa mga manggagawa. Let's move on to the next age. We have now the electronic age. Kung noong industrial age ay steam and fuel ang ginagamit, dito gumagamit na tayo ng electricity, kaya tinawag itong electronic age. Dito na-invent ang mga kilalang electronic components such as transistors, sensors, and microchips na kapag pinagsama-sama ay magpa-function together with the help of electricity. Ang transistors yung isa sa pinakamahalagang na-develop nila noon dahil ito yung nakakapag-amplify or switch ng electronic signals and electrical power. Some of our examples for the electronic age are the following. We have the television, radio, desktop computers, game consoles, or handheld devices. Dito na na-develop yung transmissions of signals. Ito na yung umpisa ng ease of long-distance communication. And now, we have the information or digital age. Ito na yung new media platforms natin today. This is where online, gadgets, application, and social media come in. In this new age of media, nagkakaroon pa rin ito ng developments hanggang ngayon. All of which has the aim of making tasks easier, faster, and more accessible as long as you have the access to an internet connection. So going back to the title of our lesson, let us differentiate traditional media versus new media. Sa traditional media, ito yung media platforms na ginagamit natin noon. Kadalasan, ito ay one-way or walang feedback, like what we have discussed in our previous lesson. Naalala pa kaya kung ano ang communication model na tinutukoy natin dito? Ito yung mga newspaper, TV, radio, print ads at iba pa. On the other hand, new media naman ay tumutukoy sa ating online and digital world kagaya ng social media and internet access na siyang available na sa ating mga kamay ngayon like cell phones, laptops, tablets at iba pa. So kung mapapansin natin, pagdating sa new media, mas interactive na. Kaya na nating magbigay ng opinion or comments sa bawat information na matatanggap natin. 
Some of the significant events na meron tayo sa information or digital age ay ang pagkaka-invent ng Internet Explorer, WordPress, social media networks na alam ko ay gamit na gamit natin ngayon. We also have the microblogs, search engines, video streaming platforms, and video chat. We also have the more recent development in media like the augmented reality or virtual reality, cloud computing, and internet of things. Malaki ang natutulong sa atin ng new media ngayong digital age, lalo na during this pandemic. Nagawa nating ipagpatuloy ang education dahil dito. Mabilis na rin nating matanggap ang kahit anong balita na gustong malaman. So kayo bilang mga bahagi ng Generation Z, alin kaya sa mga traditional media ang nagagamit nyo pa? Or tuluyan na ba kayo nag-transition towards the use of the new media? Now, for your activity this week, dear students, create a timeline on how media and information have evolved throughout history. Please use this rubric as your guide in making your timeline. Consider the title, documentation of events, content or facts, accuracy, and sentence fluency. Don't forget to submit your output in our Google Classroom. That concludes our discussion for today. Again, this is Mom Rachel Ann, and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, everyone!